everybody. Welcome back to the next part. Let's continue right on where we were. We just picked up a note. And it was this one, the rockworm study. I just wanted to say too before I get into reading this, I haven't had a single crash yet. Um, I did initially when I was setting the game up, but that was before I um, implemented my correct files that I already had. I just hadn't put them in yet. But just the way I showed you guys how to configure and mod and tweak this game, I've had no crashes. And you can look here at my readings up here. I think I've shown this already in the video. Um, the OGL is OpenGL. Um, you might have heard of like DirectX 10 or 11. OpenGL is like that. It's another what they call API application process interface maybe. Um, but OpenGL is not really used much anymore, I don't think. And anything that was using it has switched over to DirectX of some form. Um, OpenGL is mostly in Mac games and I think Frictional Games uh, made this for Mac or designed it on Mac, but they made it available for you know, PC, IBM users. Anyway, that's what the OGL is, and then 60 FPS is what this game runs. Um, G memory is my graphics card memory. I have 8 gigs. I'm using 2.8 gigs. Uh, C memory is my computer memory. I have 16 gigs which hopefully I'm going to be getting another two sticks of eight, another 16, so then I'll have 32 gigabytes of memory. It's only another $50. I have um, Crosshair uh, Vengeance, uh, DR, DR4, uh, I think it is. Uh, so yeah. 50 bucks for double would be nice. But I'm only using about 6 gigs here. And then G temp, my graphics card temperature is 39 Celsius, which is super cool. Uh, cool, I mean low. C temp is my CPU, and uh, it's fine, but uh, this game uh, really works hard on the CPU. It's a more CPU heavy game than it is a graphics game for the graphics card. Then G fan, my per total total percent my fans are spinning. They're only at 23%, which is like my idle speed for my graphics card fans. Is uh, it's preset to the uh, lowest it can spin is 23. I wish I could turn my fan completely off if I wanted to, but I don't have that option. It's like uh, hard coded into the fan uh, to the graphics card to only let the fans spin at 23% or above. And then G usage is the total usage of my graphics card. The game's only using 34% of my graphics card's power. So these are all good levels. They'd be good levels in any game. Um, see there, the C, C temp, it just spiked over 70 Celsius. See, 70, 65. It's fine, but it'd be lower in a more modern, modern game. All right. Here we are with this note. Professor. These are the biomedical journals of Dr. J. Pet Petris, Petis, uh, PhD, completed between the dates of 30th of March, 1969, and the 1st January, 1972, at the Northwestern Research Station within the Northwestern Iron Mine, with the permission of Delta Mining Corp. Replication of selected ex extracts left at the disposal of mine foreman. Subject of study, genus Rhycophilia, commonly gray rock worm. Aim to investigate the abnormal presence of the caddis, caddis in the Greenland rock. Method, collection of samples. If indeed they can be identified correctly, standard series of testing, observation, and dissection. Personal notes. Upon arrival at the mining facility, I was immediately stunned by the sheer volume of fauna that finds a way of life down here, despite the conditions. 
in general one would assume that species whose natural habitat is past a certain depth would find the intrusion of human activity to a great threat to remain in place. However, almost the exact opposite seems to be the case in this instance. It is curious that certain areas of the mine appear to be entirely without life of any kind, and yet other deeper areas are teeming and were the situation permitting and were the situation permitting, I would embrace the opportunity to commit further time to the study of these organisms. However, the purpose of my stay here shall continue to be the genus Rycophilia, the rock worm. You'll have to forgive my pronunciation stuff. I'm doing my best. <laughs> but I'm willing to read to you guys, but I can't promise I'm going to uh, say things correctly or not stumble over my words all the time. Me. Ah, finally. Some writing paper. Look at me, just using up the pages to scroll down whatever comes into my head. Ha! What is this stuff anyway? Some kind of research paper? No matter. It's paper all the same. I can finally record what's been happening down here for, I suppose, about a year now. It must be near the end of 2001 by now. Huh? I would... I wonder when Christmas was. No matter. Too tired to write. Now. We'll rest a little first. Professor. Samples collected. The collection process has been far easier than I anticipated. The setup of the artificial environment for the rock worm went without a hitch, and the specimens themselves are so abundant as to make keep keeping them out far more challenging than containing them. They are all the healthy size, perhaps even beyond recorded size, and I can only assume that this is due to some lack of natural predators down here. Specimens are as follows. Three adults in artificial habitat, Two larval infants, infants dead. Me, I've been down here two days now. <laughs> was meaning to record events every day, but was too busy to secure securing the area. I used some supplies from the old mining system to wall myself in. It seems a safe place as any, so those things should at least put. A, so those things should at least stay put for a little while. To that end, it seems I've had a pretty lucky stumble in here, as this old research is about something similar to what's been hunting me ever since I escaped the shelter four days ago. Don't get me wrong, after what, after what they did to me back there, I'd rather be facing anything else than after almost a year of fighting for our lives. We didn't really stand a chance anyway. I don't know how many are left inside. But this is good. The notes might have some way to fight the things. The rock worms that followed me here. I don't know how they knew I was coming or how they managed to follow me in the dark, but maybe I can walk, maybe I can work that out now. I found some old newspaper clippings, I guess. Uh, I guess. They are referring to this mine. I had no idea it was so old, so big. I can see how old. I can see now why they built that facility here in the first place. A lot of history buried down here. It worries me though. We've been resting all our hopes of rescue on one of the ancient, one of the scientists who's escaped right near the start of it all. He got out almost as the chaos began, so we figured he might have made it out and brought help, but maybe me and him are due the same fate. I must record what's been going on give the world the answers it needs so it doesn't fall prey to what's been released down here. But first I need to worry about myself, find a way out, and work out how to kill these worm things. Professor, observations. The creatures are indeed larger uh, than has previously been recorded. The juveniles seem to still be growing far beyond their natural limits. While the, the, the adults have now expired, I will watch with interest to see what lifespan is of the particular subspecies. The worms appear to have three senses, as would be validated by previous research, taste, smell, and an extremely sensitive sense of touch, which allows them to detect vibrations in the rock in the same way that the human eye senses beams of light and processes them into spatial images. Their natural prey is insects smaller than themselves and heaven help those insects, because the worm is a vicious and efficient killer. Me. 
He's wrong. They have no sense of smell. Today I attempted to distract them with the concoction I found lying around, but to no avail. However, it does seem that they detect movement via vibrations, which would explain how they can see in the dark. Damn, there's almost no way to escape them down here. I'm on their territory now. I'm on their territory. Or I'm in their ter territory. Lifespan is three days and counting. I can still hear them outside the wall as an extra precaution. I've locked myself in the smaller study area connected to the main lab room. If they get through that wall, I doubt this door will stop them, but it's better than nothing, well, barely. I doubt they'll okay, they get through that wall. So he, bore, he bricked it up recently. Hasn't even dried yet, the cement. And he was hiding out in here. Professor Conclusions, the subspecies of genus Rycophilia is a highly ad adapted for its environment. Uh, it released above the surface, it seems likely that it would quickly destroy the existing rock worm population, and soon after that, the population would grow to the size far outstripping its own food supply. Given its increase in size and lifespan already, due to the unknown conditions, I would hypothesize that the worm, if left in such conditions for a reasonable period of time, perhaps three to four thousand years, could grow up to further three inches. So three inches for every four thousand years. That means if they're already this big, they've been down here a long time, <laughs> making it a total of almost four foot long. However, should those conditions change or indeed magnify, physical evolution could occur far more rapidly. Me. It's the fifth day down here. <laughs> or fifth day today. And I swear they have begun to surround my location. I can't tell whether or not they have breached the wall I built, but I'm certain they're, uh, they have entered whatever area surrounds this room. The future looks increasingly bleak. I intended to record here the events of the past year in the hope that perhaps what occurred would be contained or driven away. Now I realize I could write all I wanted. No one will ever make it down here to read it. So why I write this now? Good question. I have no answers. All I do now is... All I do know is I'd rather take my own life and die at the jaws of the... than die at the jaws of those hideous monsters. I have tried a noose. Those monsters may feed on my corpse, but they won't take my life. Man, jeez. This is a professor talking. Uh, no description on that. Did I just blow the thing up that was inside of it? I guess so. I wanted to see what that is. What is it? Wow, the thing just goes like flying. I guess we'll never know what that is. Yeah, and I'm going against my own rule here. Um, while you hunt for those delicate, uh, melt-in-your-mouth mousy morsels, there are places you should not go, for, for fear of death. The Reaper lives here, just like you and I. And just like you and I, he must ingest the living flesh of those less fortunate to him. There is a small place that I do not want you to visit, even on your holidays, because it is dark and evil place that I've been. When the darkness has overwhelmed my small, decaying mind, some bad things have flowed from my mind and through my pen. The brilliant blue ink itself seemed to turn to blood into my grace. And by the way, should you turn blackish, red is at its finest sautéed with a little engine oil. Okay, <laughs> red. I guess we, uh... I'm not done here, obviously, but I guess when I walked here I hit the trigger uh, for that dialogue to happen. Cough. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, geez. All right then.
There's writing scrawled everywhere. It must be an ultraviolet ink. Definitely the product of a deranged mind. But whose? <laughs> Light switch. Yeah. That was a little startling. It's the music. Yeah, so half of this video is taken up by reading the note, but that's how some of these games are going to be uh, that have a lot of reading in them. What's it good to say? There's only one green blooded land dwelling creature big enough to lose this much blood. And I don't see many skink lizards hanging around. I don't think I've ever seen a skink lizard. in here someone must have been in a great deal of pain. These cabinets were damaged, something all that went on. Still can't read what those are. Any goodies? Any kind? Nope. It's an artificial habitat. Those things look long dead. I think I know how they felt not being able to get out. can't go this way anyway, which is good, because I don't want to go on there. <laughs> so, something to do with... Yeah, I jotted down a note. Ah, oh, with the UV light, there's some text showing up on the blank piece of paper. Right. I can actually read it here. Lonely, blood is deep. Uh, left the blood... The blood is deep. Head is lying. The darkness eats. Uh, point. Portal. Portal. Inhale. Place. I don't know what that says. Flesh. Body. Water. Where. Where. No. Time. Death is no fun. <laughs> Alright, let's look at the note. The note reads, storage password 1371. Goodies. Storage password. It's not that one place, is it? Sector C, what called storage? Hmm. I'm sure we'll run into it. Alright, so that's all the reason to come in here it really was. Get some more note reading. Get the blank note to show something, which was the code. So look at it again and get it. Okay. Quick save, get my... I always try to have like my weapon out and my glow stick, just in case something's gonna go down. Also do a hard save. Don't destroy the saving ability. Yes, I know it's an old artifact. You have to put your weapon away, then click it. I may never get used to that. Yeah, me neither, having to put my weapon away every time so I'm defenseless, so I can save my game. There will be, uh... We'll be environment friendly and energy uh, conservative. I didn't even see that note on the ground until just now. News clipping, Copenhagen Post. Copenhagen Post, Friday 25th, December 1970. Superstition extinct. Death mind still breathing. Okay, a worker at the Northwestern Iron Mine, Greenland, is missing, presumed dead. As of midnight last night, locals fear foul play. 
Mining now forms the largest, largest single industry in Greenland. At 16 years old, the Northwestern Iron Mine is a relatively new part of a larger complex with almost, which almost, the, which also includes a lead operation and is built on the site of an older mine, later converted into a military bunker and finally closed in 1952. The iron mine retains its excellent work record in spite of the recent disappearances of an as of yet unnamed worker. We have discovered that the man in question was a young laborer brought in from mainland Europe, possibly Denmark, and authorities on both sides of the strait are currently attempting to conduct any fam contact any family he may have left behind. The man disappeared 10 days ago in the mine of Foreman has now exercised his power to declare him presumed dead. Hmm. This decision, we are told, was taken lightly as... was not taken lightly. A full search of the mining operation has commissioned to no avail. Without the appropriate equipment or transport, the man could not have survived on the surface. Although the superstition in Greenland has seen a decrease in popularity over the past years, some local inhabitants still claim that the land itself is cursed. This very paper ran a report almost 50, bleh, almost 40 years ago to the day, discuss, discussing high suicide figures for the area, but findings at the time were considered to be inconclusive. Lars Jensen. Taking a sip of water. Okay. I'll get better at this reading. I'm going to save again over time. I always tend to play games really late, so I'm kind of out of it anyway. But doing my best for you guys. Killing the chair. Yeah, I did not even see that on the ground. Sometimes the place is so well lit, and if you have the glow, uh, what is it? Options, game, flashing items. If you have this on, and you turn your light source off, then you're gonna be able to see something like that a whole lot easier. Just a little pro tip, I guess. For myself, even, because It's dead. I didn't even notice that. Alright, so now we're gonna head back. far to reach. I don't see any point going back there anyway. That's where we came from. We fell down and I went that way. This is the way I went. By the way, I mean like a lot of people play games, you know, for the first time when they play it on their YouTube channel. Worm again. Or they might even pre-play a game that they're going to play on their channel for the first time. I'm not really doing that just because um, a lot of the games I'll play or I'm going to play, I'm pretty decent at anyway. Um, so I'm not really worried about not being able to get through them per se. Um, I feel like, you know, I'm familiar enough with a lot of these. Um, I should just play them and record it, you know, while I play. Um, you know, it's just normal gameplay. I'm not always going to have something, like, brilliant to say about a game I'm playing, but sometimes I'll have little things that I can uh, inform you about that will be helpful, I hope. Okay. Here's another map. So we are Shaft 12. 
and we got a storage password. Is it for tool storage? I'm kind of forgetting. Uh, I think we've been everywhere. I think the refinery was locked. Or no, it doesn't matter. We can just go. Let's go check the refinery. This way. We killed all the dogs that were in this area, so I don't think this game is going to respawn them. I don't think. I don't remember the game respawning enemies once you kill them. Okay, let's try to go here first. But have your weapon out regardless. Except we need to open the door. <laughs> okay, it's locked. So we can't go in the refinery. And there's no key code for this door. So we'll probably come out of that door from like another direction would be my guess. I just wanted to check and confirm. I thought it was locked, but I wasn't sure. So I want to head to tool storage because we got that uh, code. Um, let's see where tool storage is. Okay, straight, and then left, and then right. Left, right, left. Well, if you look at the signs. Left, right, left. Oh, you went the wrong way. Yeah, he talked about that being busted down. It was the eyeball shining there. I just heard a door open through it. I think it was the one I just hit. It must have been slightly open. Yeah, I thought somebody was like closing the door over here. Right here's sector C. try it, but it ain't gonna work. <laughs> nope. I'm trying to read it. Oh man, I can't read it now because that's no good. I can't read it because I'm not in the light and I didn't write it down. <laughs> How lame is that? This whole storage is open though. So this is where we got these from. Oh man, we gotta go back. I keep pressing uh, the button that lets you uh, interact, go into like interact mode without moving the screen. Because in other games, like whatever, Resident Evil or something, that would be my map key. And I keep forgetting uh, you can't carry a map in this game. You have to stumble across it on a wall. That's if you remember where the map is. So we gotta go back to shaft 12. Straight up to the right, left. Straight up to the right. But that's my fault. And that's why, totally my fault. didn't make it permanently visible. It's, it's only visible when you're standing in the room, which would only be logical. Just my unlogical ass didn't think it was important enough to remember. <laughs> okay. Do this again. 1371. I opened my calculator app on my phone and I typed in 1371 because <laughs> I'm not going to try to remember it. That's another pro tip too in games like this that have... Uh, I mean, I remember playing some old ass games, you know, where you have to write stuff down. <laughs> you don't have the luxury of... Uh, a notebook and just the games expect you to write things down. That's how you remember. Okay, so now I guess 
what happens every time you come in here. Must be what the guy's going on with that. Alright, let's stop the video here. Uh, 30 minute buzzer's buzzing me. Um, we didn't make a lot of progress in this video because of all the note reading and backtracking I had to do. But uh, we'll continue on in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.